we can't wave goodbye to all these folks on the dock. We just cut the line, but that's okay. So, that's good. And sir, if you like, I can help you steer this fine vessel. And you can control the speed. And uh, once we come around the corner, you're going to see some large butterflies. And it reminds me to mention that we actually release hundreds of thousands of insects into the atmosphere every single year. The reason why? Because, because uh, it's a much more environmentally efficient way of getting rid of pest bugs like mosquitoes. Okay. Now that we are out of the view of the guests that are waiting on the dock so patiently, I can now explain to you that the steering wheel that I'm using actually doesn't do anything. That is part of the show. And to help me to better explain how these boats operate, they're on a track. There are two rods. One is right around here, and the other one is right underneath the engine. They go down about four feet. And down four feet, there is a little trough with a wheel. One wheel around this area, one wheel down there at the bottom of those pylons. And basically, <laughs> you would never hear of a boat crashing on the Jungle Cruise. You might hear of a boat breaking down on the Jungle Cruise, which is magical, but not actually crashing. <laughs> we'll explore that more in just a moment, but first, coming up on the right, you're going to see three boats on the shore. They belong to three very important characters that we all know. The first one, the one with the blue face and the curved horns, that belongs to Mickey Mouse. The second one belongs to Donald Duck. You notice the beak. The third one with the ears belongs to Goofy. <laughs> That's abstract art if you're not really getting it. <laughs> okay, so we also have on the side a snake all in the tree, and there are times that you could go on the jungle cruise and you might not see that snake because we have to take him out piece by piece and put him back piece by piece as they have to repaint him every so often. With him aside, all the other animals like the gorillas over here, the silverback, if, for example, their fur gets a lot of moss and looks really gross after a while, we'll take him out immediately and replace him overnight, and you would never notice that he was missing. You know, in our own sort of mishap, when the attraction first opened in 1971 with the park, the, the gorillas had a reddish tinge to their fur. Fortunately, one Imagineer said to somebody else, you know, it's a silver back gorilla, we should change the color of the fur. <laughs> So throughout the Jungle Cruise, we have a lot of laser sensors. When the boats go through, it will trigger certain sound effects and um, animations. We'll actually be able to see one of those sensors in plain view. Once we get past this wall of rocks, you're going to see on the shoreline a small pile of rocks with a black device on top of it. I'll point right to it, right there. So the boat goes through that, and magically all these animals start moving around making noise. And by the way, all of these animals, characters, are running off of what we call air pneumatic devices. I'll explain that too in just another moment. But once we come around the next corner, you're going to see a story scene done by the Imagineer in charge of the design of Jungle Cruise, Mark Davis. You'll notice the face at the bottom, that gentleman that's sort of looking at you with a hat. That's a great example of our fourth key to the kingdom. Which was, anybody remember? Efficiency. Cost efficiency. Because we actually reuse a lot of the same faces in many of our attractions. So, you can think of a good attraction like Spaceship Earth. The big ball ride at Epcot. If you go on that ride, you see the Roman scene and the Renaissance and the Dark Ages and everything. If you look at those faces, you're actually looking at a lot of U.S. presidents. And by the way, folks, this waterfall is a little more important than the first one that we went by. Because behind it... We put a lot of water-soluble dye into the water periodically. So what happens? When the boats go through and it turns up all that dye. So when you look over the side, you'll notice that you can't see the bottom. Because the water is only four feet deep, we don't want you to see the bottom. And by the way, sir, we have right over here this plane wreck. It's a piece of a plane. You'll notice on the plane, at the very bottom, right between the two rocks, you're going to see nail heads that make up three circles, the infamous head of Mickey Mouse, one of the first hit Mickeys on our tour. And in case anybody's wondering, see it right there. In case anyone's wondering where the rest of that plane is, it's actually on another classic Disney attraction over at Hollywood Studios, the great movie ride in the Casablanca scene. Now we are in the deepest portion of the Jungle Cruise. The water here ranges between six and eight feet deep, and this is the only place that a skipper is allowed to shoot off a gun.
I'm just gonna shoot at the hippos that are in the trees for you, my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Funny story, but I'll tell you in just a minute. When we round the next corner, folks, you're gonna see some natives over on this side throwing spears. And one of them says the words, I love disco. <laughs> I think what they were intending for was an abbreviation for Disney Company, <laughs> Disco. Disco wasn't big until the late 1970s. So, all of those animals that we saw, oh, actually, it reminds me to mention, when in 1998, when Animal Kingdom opened, the main theme there, for the most part, is conservation. So our, many of our executives thought we're sending a mixed message if we're shooting at animals on the Jungle Cruise. So that's why the guns were removed from all the boats for a couple of years. When they were put back in, one exception, shoot the guns off in the air. The last scene of the Jungle Cruise is the elephant baiting pool. Mark Davis wanted some comic relief for the end of our, of our attraction. And the skippers have a very important role because on certain uh, mornings before the ride opens, they'll take big brushes and they'll scrub off all the various animals. We want to keep them looking realistic, otherwise a lot of moss and mildew can grow on them. And what Emmett actually just did is he slowed down for a moment and that triggered the sensor to go off, which allowed us not to be squirted by an elephant. One of the drawbacks of having laser sensors is if it's raining outside, the sensors might not pick up, which means if you're on this boat while it's raining, you might get squirted by an elephant. <laughs> So the Jungle Cruise has changed over the years, and it's going to continue to change. Like the one out in Disneyland got an upgrade in 2005, and it now has piranhas in one of the scenes, as well as an explosion area. Our Jungle Cruise is going to, uh, is, is going to change, but we always remember our history, because you'll see right here, this guy's weren't a throwback to the original Jungle Cruise. Back in 1971 and through the early 80s, the boats were a little bit smaller, and they weren't painted camouflage, they were actually white. And the canopies on top were red and white stripes. That is Trader uh, Sam wearing the red and white stripes skirt. Well, Emmett, I want to thank you, sir, for your hospitality. I have a feeling you're going to be going on this ride again and again and again and again. But uh, how about a hand for, give it up for Emmett. Thank you very much, sir. Give the mic back to you. Okay. Magical.